Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about our beautiful planet Earth and specifically about the climate in relation to the tilt of the axis of Earth and we're going to basically talk about the tilt a little bit because one of you wonderful people asked me that I do mention this at some point in one of future videos, which I totally promised. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So a person by the name of Jacob Sternberg, and I hope I pronounced the name correctly, asked me to talk about what if Earth actually had a tilt of zero degrees. Now, you may have known already, or you may have not known already, that Earth is actually tilted by about 23.4 degrees in relation to the plane of solar system. So this is a tilt, this is how we tilt Earth. And of course, this is also what causes climate on our planet Earth. So if I tilt this by 65 degrees, you'll notice that suddenly all the ice in the north disappears. And then all of the ice in the Arctic, uh, in the Antarctic also starts disappearing a lot more frequently. This will, of course, affect the temperature, the uh, um, amount of ice on the planet, the amount of water, and will eventually increase the uh, greenhouse effect. And will also change a lot of other things, including things like albedo. But what I wanted to do first is actually see what happens if you first tilt the Earth by zero degrees. So we're going to go into climate, open the surface temperature graph separately, make this a little bit easier to observe, and then we're going to go in motion and um, completely reduce obliqu obliquity, which is the tilt, to zero. And then we're just going to run this. And you'll notice that um, what happens is that you get an interesting graph, a graph that just kind of goes up and down. But um, right away you also see that the ice layer that was kind of moving up and down a lot just kind of stays in the same area now. So this essentially eliminated the seasons on our planet. So some parts of the Earth will always have snow and some parts will never have snow. And uh, you'll notice that it still kind of oscillates a little bit. There's a, a bit of an oscillation that kind of occurs maybe right here. And this is actually because of um, eccentricity. So the uh, distance to the sun is still not exactly set. It's not exactly fixed. It kind of goes up and down a little bit. And if I actually decrease eccentricity as well, that's when uh, the actual temperature will sort of stay relatively similar, relatively same. So now we've sort of eliminated climate. Climate has been gone forever. What, uh, what did this look like originally? Well, let's actually go back to the original simulation and I'll show you what it looked like before. And so here, take a look at the original graph and you'll see that there's actually quite a lot of things happening. And while this graph is actually being developed, let's briefly talk about this idea of sort of obliquity or uh, essentially the axis tilt. Now, we've actually known about this for like thousands of years. Even the um, ancient Greeks and Indians and Chinese knew about these um, different sort of changes in climate uh, or seasons, I guess. And uh, they attributed them to essentially what uh, they thought of as um, the axial change of our planet. And interestingly, they were even able to measure it to some extent, not very accurately, but relatively accurately. But one of the more accurate predictions was from um, Tycho Brahe, which is, or who was um, a Danish um, astronomer living back in the 16th century. And he was able to predict this um, to about relatively accurate number of 23 degrees back in 1584. So like over or close to 450 years ago. And essentially, this is what the actual graph looks like. And you'll notice that it's not a perfect sort of curve. There's a bit of a, um, a gap right here. It sort of goes up and down a little bit. And this is actually because of eccentricity and because of some other factors and other changes that, that affect our planet, including, of course, the change in... Um, I can't really show it. Here it is. A change of albedo effect, which um, is the reflectivity of a planet. Um, you'll notice that this goes from 32% to 33%, depending on the amount of snow. Now, this number shows you how reflective the planet is. 100% means that the planet reflects all of the light. 0% um, means all of the light is absorbed. So like Venus, for example, has 90% reflectivity. So it reflects like 90% of the light, which means that we can't really, you know, see most of the surface because most of the light is just reflected back. Whereas on Earth, you can kind of see 32 to 33%. But what's really interesting is that if you actually start playing around with just the um, axial tilt, you'll notice that uh, things get a little bit interesting. So I'm going to actually increase the axial tilt to about 45 degrees now. And look at what happens. Surprisingly, 
the climate has changed completely. So suddenly the winters and summers are more extreme, temperature, average temperature seems to be increasing, and most of it is actually because suddenly the albedo effect has decreased as well. So suddenly Earth overall is a lot warmer than it used to be. And this is sort of the extreme example of what happens when the axial tilt changes. And what we know about the axial tilt is that because of the interaction with other planets like Jupiter and Mars, um, and including also Venus actually, um, Earth um, does change its axial tilt from about 22 um, degrees 13 minutes to about 24 degrees 20 minutes every um, 41,000 years or so. So basically it does change its axial tilt and what's even more interesting is that the very recent study from 2016 has discovered that this sort of a change, and I'm actually going to close this for a second, you can kind of see that this is the main difference here, uh, this axial change also was responsible for the human migration through our planet Earth. So humans used to kind of live somewhere right here in um, Horn of Africa, but as the axial ch tilt changed and the climate changed, they started moving towards th um, the greener pastures. So there's actually a lot of green pastures that developed in this area, and they kind of moved along them, and then they moved through... Um, Arabian Peninsula and they moved into this region and uh, eventually spread into Asia and to some extent to Europe, but uh, not so much into Europe. So they actually moved mostly into the east, eastern parts, they found new um, green areas here, and then they sp spread to the, I mean, when I say they, I mean us, we spread into the um, Asia Pacific and Australia as well, and then eventually into Europe. And the reason why we didn't spread into Europe as dramatically as we did to other parts of the world is because Europe also had a lot of Neanderthals living here, and so there was a bit of a conflict between humans and Neanderthals which eventually re resulted in us sort of both eliminating and also assimilating the Neanderthals. Um, but interestingly, so this axial tilt and this climate change was responsible for the human migration. And this is actually a very recent study that was published and you can kind of see um, the paper for the study in the description below. And it's very, very interesting because basically this axial change does affect the climate. It affects the climate in such an extreme way that um, you can kind of see it here. Like, I mean, the actual average temperature increased by something like two degrees now. Now, if I change it the other way, if I basically d reduce this to about like, I don't know, five degrees or something or two degrees, um, you'll see that it does change again. It actually decreases um, and I mean, it, or average temperature decreases. And uh, this effect does become sort of pro uh, very prominent. And so um, there's going to be a lot more snow um, in the northern regions here. And so this will not be as hospitable to humans. And obviously the humans might actually decide to move south, which is what essentially happened over the periods of about 100,000 years. So every time this axial change occurred, humans moved to the areas that were essentially more habitable and more you know, warm and nice, as opposed to being sort of cold and not um, as hospitable to us. But what's even more interesting about this axial tilt is that it's actually stabilized uh, on our planet by our beautiful moon, which unfortunately is absent from this simulation, but we're going to manually add it right there. So the moon is actually really, really fastly orbiting around our planet now, but there it is, and it actually stabilizes our tilt. Um, if there wasn't a moon orbiting our planet, our tilt changes would be more extreme and the climate changes would be more extreme as well. Uh, the best example of this is actually Mars. I'm trying to find it right now. So Mars, what, that's right here, actually has really extreme tilt, tilt chill or axial changes. It goes from zero obliquity, which is the value right here. It goes from zero to about 60 every few million years or uh, like every million years or so. And this means that the climate changes on this planet are a lot more extreme than on our planet, meaning that if we actually end up, you know, colonizing and terraforming this one day, it might be a little bit more difficult to live there in a few million years when the actual tilt changes as well. Whereas Mercury and Venus don't have them um, to that uh, extreme extent because the Sun actually stabilizes their axial change. So um, both of these planets have a very sort of stable obliquity. Specifically for Mercury, it's relatively low, but for uh, Venus, 
it is ridiculously high. Venus is essentially upside down. It's actually spinning the opposite direction and is um, basically upside down from other planets in our solar system. The other uh, planet that has a very extreme um, axial tilt is actually Uranus that has an axial tilt of, uh, in this game, it's 97.9 but I believe in the reality it's actually 82.2, which is sort of like the on the opposite side, so it's sort of this way. And uh, so that's the axial tilt of Uranus, meaning that it sort of spins on its side. Uh, so it does have quite a lot of extreme climate changes as well, which are actually forming a lot of things like the uh, great dark spot of Neptune that I briefly talked about in one of the last videos. Um, but yeah, so uh, the axial tilt is very, very important for many different planets but it is absolutely crucial for our planet Earth because that's essentially what uh, makes seasons, what causes a lot of changes on our planet that are essential to life and, of course, um, causes a lot of, you know, human activities and human migration and, you know, does things like Christmas and also New Year because otherwise we wouldn't have those. But if I decrease the ambiguity of Earth, which I just did very recently, um, and this is actually almost three degrees now, you can see that it actually gets a little bit colder on average, which means that when the axial tilt um, decreases to 22 degrees, the Earth on average becomes a little bit colder and a little bit less hospitable to, I guess, human life. So there's a lot more ice shelves and stuff. Um, whereas if it increases to about 24 degrees, uh, which is, I guess, the extreme case would be here. The average temperature increases, so there's more hospitable areas in the north, probably a little bit, a little bit of less hospitable areas in the south, which is why humans actually migrated in waves, and you can actually even detect these waves historically by looking at things um, like ancient artifacts that um, ancient humans left um, lying around everywhere. And uh, we have actually found various artifacts um, that can be traced to various human migrations as well. And just to show you the uh, extreme example of all of this, let's actually change this to 90 degrees, make it similar to Uranus, and see what happens then. Let's look at the graph if this is 90 degrees. So you'll notice that um, the actual ice shelves become sort of very, very, very hectic. So the entire North America is covered in ice for a little bit, and then the ice disappears and it becomes really hot. Same thing happens with um, Antarctica. Same thing happens with pretty much most continents, except for Australia. And um, so the ice becomes very um, prominent for like some time of the year and then completely disappears for the other times of the year, which of course makes the climate a lot more extreme. And uh, interestingly, this also affects the albedo effect quite a lot because it jumps up and down a lot more. The greenhouse effect jumps up a lot more. And um, this would create some really, really extreme, ex extreme examples of various um, climatic changes, including probably some extreme hurricanes, extreme weather conditions that we're just not used to. But essentially, um, tilt over planet Earth is ridiculously important. So if we do find a planet in the future that has um, what seems to be relatively comfortable conditions, we also need to make sure that it has um, a relatively comfortable axial tilt because these planets that have extreme axial tilt might cause some really uncomfortable weather for us as a, as a species. So in this particular example with 90 degree, degree tilt, you can see the temperature actually increases or decreases uh, from like 13 degrees to like almost 17 degrees. So there's a huge, huge temperature gap, uh, meaning that uh, on average, the temperature would actually vary quite a lot with super ultra cold winters right now and then super ultra hot summers right now which is not something that we want. Uh, and actually, unfortunately, it's something that we're headed toward because every summer seems to be more extreme and so is every winter. But that's maybe another story for another day. And so let's actually take our Earth back to 23.4 degrees and return it back to normal just so you can actually see and appreciate what the weather becomes now and what uh, the climate is now um, when um, Earth actually has normal axial tilt as it does today and when everything else normalizes as well with the moon being the, st the main stabilizer for our axial tilt. And th there you go. So you have a relatively normal temperature curve, a lot more less extreme than it was here. And the winters and summers are just as they were back in, uh, in the original Earth that I showed you a few minutes ago. And this is the Earth that we know today. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to talk about in this video, a really simple representation of axial tilt, and maybe we'll talk about this topic a little bit more in the future because it's actually a lot more complex than this, and there's a lot more things to mention as well. 
Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share this video. And please leave a comment if you have any more suggestions about what I should talk about when it comes to tilt. Would you like to see more tilt related videos, especially on other planets? Maybe we'll talk about this in the future. Thank you so much for watching. Game you later. And as always, bye bye. And you, dear moon, thank you for all the good things you do for us, including stabilizing our tilt and, of course, creating things like tidal effects, which, of course, are very important for sustainability of our planet as well. You are awesome. Thanks for being there, moon. Thank you very much. Bye, guys.